Well, humanity <laughs> is peering deeper in a space than ever before. Yeah, this is pretty cool. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has produced the deepest and sharpest infrared image of the distant universe to date. So the image shows thousands of galaxies. Some are closer and brighter, while others are very faint and far away. It's a small slice of the universe as it appeared 4.6 billion wow. years ago. Yeah, so later today, a separate batch of full-color images from the telescope are going to be released. Paul Delaney, Professor Emeritus, Department of Physics and Astronomy with York University, joins us live right now via Skype. And first off, uh, Professor Delaney, what are your thoughts? What is your reaction to seeing this for the first time when it was released yesterday, all the pomp and circumstance? Oh, I, I just love being a time traveler, Bakari. When I look at those sorts of images, as you said, the galaxies in the foreground, they're 4.6 billion years old. That is older than our solar system. And then the fainter, smaller images behind it, they are probably twice that. So mm -hmm. you're, you're looking at the age of the universe unfolding in front of you in sharp, glorious detail. Everything we ever hoped for for the James Webb Space Telescope seems to be coming to pass. Mm -hmm. And Professor Delaney, one of the fascinating and confusing things is that we aren't just looking at things very far away. We're actually doing a kind of back to the future or back to the past type of thing. We're actually looking back in time. Can you explain that? That's right. I mean, time travel, Jennifer, uh, for astronomers is, is pretty routine, but it mm -hmm. goes one way. We can't go into the future. We can only go into the past. The further an object is away from us, the longer it takes light to travel that distance. Mm. So, you know, if you've got a, a star nearby that is only 100 light years away, that light has been traveling 100 years to get to you. So you're looking at that star as it was 100 years ago. For the galaxy images that we're looking at here, as we just said, for the foreground, foreground galaxies, 4.6 billion years ago, that light left those galaxies and has finally arrived. But the real story is the faint lensed galaxies that are much further behind. And that gives us insight into an era in the universe, which we've not been able to see that clearly ever before. And we expect to be able to push the limits of uh, James Webb even further back to literally within a couple of hundred million years of the beginning of time itself. And wow. Professor Delaney, when I was, you know, hearing about this and reading about it yesterday, this is literally just the beginning of, you know, what scientists and astronomers are going to be learning. Can you kind of elaborate on all of this? Because there's a lot to unpack there. That's right. I mean, we, we refer to the Hubble Space Telescope, the, the predecessor of James Webb, as astronomy's discovery machine. I'm not quite sure what we're going to be able to call James Webb, because the, the mm -hmm. information that we're going to be able to sift and sort from the universe will be stunning. We're going to be having a look at uh, exoplanets, planets around other stars, literally weather reports from those planets. We will look at galaxy clustering as it happened literally at the beginning of time, 200 million years after the beginning of time. We expect to be able to examine the planets in our own solar system in unprecedented detail. Mm -hmm. So every aspect of astronomy is going to see a, a flood of data that is so pristine that it will answer all sorts of questions mm -hmm. that we've been asking for years, but but unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever way you want to think of it, we'll ask more questions as a result of that analysis. Mm -hmm. And speaking of questions, uh, Professor Delaney, what is the point of all this? I know data <laughs> is important, but is this data being collected so that we know if Mars or another planet or galaxy is inhabitable for humans? What's kind of the end yes. goal? Well, there are, gosh, many answers to that, but perhaps the, the, the most fundamental is to understand how the universe has evolved. And if we can better understand the way not only our planet and our star system evolved, can we apply that to looking for life elsewhere? The ultimate question of are we alone, while it will not be directly answered by the mm -hmm. James Webb Telescope, the collecting of the information, the fundamental building blocks of stars and galaxies and planets, those fundamentals will be supplied to us by James Webb. And who knows, maybe one of those spectra by the Canadian uh, instruments on board James Webb will show us the biosignatures for life mm. around a distant planet. Only time will tell.
Wow. Yeah. He's literally out of this world. Yeah. Uh, Professor Delaney <laughs> yep. of uh, Physics and Astronomy, York University, really appreciate your insights and thanks for breaking it down for us this morning. And Professor Delaney, live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs> How do we do it? Like this? Yeah, like this. Yep, <laughs> it's hard, Jennifer. It's hard. Thank you. <laughs>